All right, so in this particular video, we're taking a look at an initial vector problem so that I have my students work on. Uh, so we have the description of three different vectors, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to lay out a picture of what this looks like. So vector A is 66 units long at 28 degrees north of east, and so you're going to draw a vector. I got a dotted line here that's going directly east. You're going to draw in the 28 degrees, and the vector length is 66 units. Our second vector is 40 units long at 56 degrees north of, of west. So this time I'm going to draw a dotted line going to the west, and I'm going 56 north of west, and our unit vector is 40 units long. And our final vector is 46.8 units due south, and so that's just straight down. We need to find the resultant in both i hat, j hat, and r theta formats. Most problems are going to ask you to solve for r theta formats anyway, and in so doing, you're always going to come up and you're always going to figure out what the i hat, j hat format is. Your resultant then from your start point to your end point is this solid red line, and what we are going to attack the problem by is by solving for the resultant components. I said resultant components, but I mean the components of the resultant in r, y, r, x. Those are the components of vector r. I'm going to label my vectors A, B, C, as you see here. I want you to make a table similar to this as you're solving these problems, and so you have vector A, B, and C all in the x direction, and then you have vectors A, B, and C all in the y direction, and then you're going to figure out what each of these legs of the triangle are. So if I want to solve for A in the x direction, A in the x direction is going to be this horizontal component of vector A. A in the y direction would be the vertical component as my mouse is moving here. We're going to use the concepts of sine and cosine here. So we know that the cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side time, or divided by the hypotenuse. Well, I want to solve for the adjacent side, this part of the dotted line here. I know the hypotenuse is 66 units long, and I know theta is 28, so the only thing I don't know is the adjacent. So if we want to solve for the adjacent side, you simply multiply the hypotenuse over here, and that's exactly what I'm going to do for A in the x direction. A in the x direction is going to be the hypotenuse of our vector times the cosine of 28. So just imagine moving the hypotenuse over here if you follow my mouse. So 66 units, cosine 28, and it's going to the right, so it's positive. Vector B is going to be going to the left, and so A, B, I'm sorry, B in the x direction is this part of the dotted line right here, but it extends further. So follow my mouse here. So B in the x direction is going this way. And so that again is going to be the hypotenuse 40 times the cosine of 56. But since it's going to the left, it is negative, And you have to put these negative signs in. You're the one who knows if it's a negative or not. If it's going to the left, it's negative. If it's going down, it's negative. C in the x direction is easy. It's all in the y direction, so C in the x direction is 0. Now you do the same thing for all the y directions. A in the y direction is the vertical component here. So that's opposite the, the angle of 28, so that's going to go with the sine. So I'm trying to solve for the opposite side, A in the y direction. I know the hypotenuse. I know what angle is. So this is going to be the hypotenuse times the sine of 28. It's positive because we're going up in the y direction. The same thing holds for B in the Y direction. B in the Y direction, imagine my, look at my mouse here. It's going up in the Y direction. And this is again opposite the 56 degrees. And so this is going to be the hypotenuse 40 times the sine of 56. That's my B in the Y direction. It's also positive because it's going up. Now my C, well, it's all down. So it's just negative 46.8. And you've got to put the negative sign in because it's down. All we're going to do is add these up, and we're going to solve for what the resultant in the x and the resultant in the y are. These are the components of our resultant vector. So I'm going to do this on the handy dandy calculator. Uh, and hopefully this works better than it did the first time I shot this video because it froze up on me. Uh, so we got 66 and cosine of 28. And we've got minus 40 cosine 56 and then zero would have to worry about and so on this one you get 35.9 units now you do the same thing in the y direction so I'll bring the calculator over here 
And in the y direction, we have 66 sine 28 plus 40 sine 56 minus all of that 46 0.8 and we get 17.3 so that goes there now I didn't mention when you're doing a and the X and a and the Y whatever trig function you use here if you use the cosine the Y direction will be the sine if you use the sine for the X direction which will occasionally happen you got to pay attention to what angle you're given you'll use the cosine over here so these will be different trig functions and you'll never use a tangent because the tangent doesn't involve the hypotenuse all right, so I've got my Rx and Ry, and this is I hat, J hat format. This is 35.9 I hat, 17.3 J hat, boom, done. All right, so we got our first answer. Now all we have to do is figure out the R theta. Well, I always redraw my triangle, and so this tells me in the X direction I went 35.9, and in the Y direction I went 17.3, both positive. So right 35.9 up 17.3 and if you look at the first picture I drew do you see how it's not quite right it's not as steep of an angle as I originally drew in here and that's because your pictures might be a lie but the math will always come out to be right and so my math told me that it's actually further in the X direction than it is in the Y direction whereas over here it was a longer Y direction and a shorter X direction and that's just because I didn't draw any of these to any kind of scale I didn't measure them I just kind of eyeballed it and winged it all right, so R and theta are right here, and that's what we need to solve for. Well, the resultant's easy. The resultant is just the Pythagorean theorem. So R squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, let's say. Now you just take the square root of that. I'm not going to do that on the calculator because you can do that yourself. So I got 39.9 units here. And the last thing I need to do is solve for theta. Well, theta is going to involve the tangent function because I know the two legs of the triangle. I know Rx and I know Ry. These are the two component legs of the resultant. Those are opposite and adjacent sides, so we're going to use the tangent idea. So the tangent of theta is equal to 17.3 divided by 35.9. So if I want to solve for just the theta, I have to undo the tangent. The opposite of tangent is an arc tangent, or some people call it an inverse tangent. And so this I will do on the calculator. Um, so this is 17.3, and I'm going to act, use the actual numbers here, divided by 35.9. I'm not going to have any rounding error here. I'm going to do this first, and then on your calculator, you take the inverse or arc tangent of that answer. Boom. 25.8 degrees. Round it off to the nearest decimal point. And so now I can solve for that, 25.8. And so now I know my answer of R and theta. So the resultant is 39.9 units at an angle of 25.8 degrees. And my angle is north of actually east. I have a typo right here, so ignore the W. This is north of east. I'll put an amendment there in the, the edits. All right, I hope this helps you. Thank you very much.